could lead to a problem. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the Sith. Great. Let's get to that emitter. Well, that view... Wow. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all. But it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. Yeah, of course I do. Starfleet's an open door. We just have to walk through it. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Calibration. Does this work? Saying so? Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious though, a Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario, but not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being, but you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned, just curious, that's all. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, 
Let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. What's happening? We've got a massive energy wave inbound on screen. Tracing its trajectory. The Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wideband burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities. Red alert. Aye. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. Optimal timing displayed. It's going to be tight. Good. Send a pulse on my command. Now. Oopsie. No, that was too early. We're... Uh, oopsie. I think it was a bit too early. Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. Optimal timing displayed. It's going to be tight. Good. Send the pulse on my command. Now. Now. We got it. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. Radiation supercharged the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. And you blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one failsafe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dears to Resolute, the failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. 
So we gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but, you know. the EPS flow to the port nacelle, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Fine. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. Get this in the middle, right? Hmm. Yeah. Middle? Yeah. So, a little, little more. Okay. The EPS lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Chobot can. from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. We have crew outside and are looking for the we safest way We have people to... on this station. If that mooring arm breaks, we could lose dozens of crew. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull. 
which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Jara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. Have to. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! Perfect! Plasma imbalance is reaching critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. We made it. Sort of. Look out! Uh. I got you. Petty Officer Ensilar's hurt and unconscious. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There's an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Okay. Roger that. Go in there now. Ooh. Auxiliary hatch. Uh. Uh. Huh. You go first. What? Let me save your neck this time. Fight me on this. Get in there. Not on your life. Let's not let it come down to that. We made it. They're safe. Bringing the SIF fully online. Do it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, 
Yeah, it could be that the stream is unstable because my internet is not the best. Nilly, I'm good. Help me with him. Let's get this off. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. You gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Great. Okay, um... Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Oh, yeah, it skips the <laughs> You disobeyed my orders. Yeah. Well? Respectfully, Captain. I made the right choice, given the information I had- You disobeyed my orders! And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well! That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order. But you were wrong. You weren't on board and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to, you did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command, as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, Set up for Hotari. Yes, sir. Okay. Ganz kurz Päuschen machen. Mal gucken, was hier los ist. Ja, ist ziemlich rot. Das Ganze. Äh. Ich gehe mal ein bisschen runter. Ob das besser wird, weiß ich nicht. Wird wahrscheinlich die Qualität wieder verringern. Hm. Okay. Hm. 
So, hier haben wir mal, äh, wie die Leute so zu uns stehen. Ne? Oh, so. Äh, so, so, so. Ja. So. Okay. Ja, also, ne? wir haben schon einen gewissen Impact auf die Folgencrew mittlerweile. So. Okay. Okay. Ja, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Ich würde sagen, für ein eingespielt reicht das auch erstmal, ne? Oder wie seht ihr das? Stream läuft ja, ohnehin nicht so wirklich stabil. Ne? Glaube ich. Und ja. Machen wir hier Ende erstmal, ja? Am, 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 am. Ich mir irgendwo speichern. Am, am, am. Müsste automatisch gespeichert sein, glaube ich. Okay. Also, ne? Ich hoffe, euch hat das soweit gefallen. Ne? Habt euch einen Eindruck von dem Spiel machen können und dann sehen wir uns beim nächsten Mal wieder. Oder so. Schaut doch gerne auf meinem YouTube-Kanal vorbei. Und ja, bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!